iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Telly, Megan, welcome to iHeartRadio Broadway, and thank you so much for joining me today. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. We are here to talk about a brand new documentary that's coming out on March 11th on Broadway On Demand called Ensemble. Telly, you are one of the producers and creator of the documentary. So I want to start with you. How did this project, how did this documentary come to be? It really came about as a brainchild from two folks in our Broadway community. Aaron Albano, who is an ensemblist himself, he is currently on tour in Hamilton, but he's a Broadway veteran that's done many, many Broadway shows, and we know each other from Allegiance on Broadway. And also Mo Brady, who's actually had a, who works at Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, and he also has a podcast called The Ensemblist, where he's been celebrating ensemble members for many, many years. So it was really their idea to gather 13 diverse, multi-generational Broadway dancers together during the pandemic to capture this time capsule of uncertainty for all of us as citizens of the world, as as dancers, as performers, as human beings, but also uncertainty for the industry. And, you know, you have, it's, it's a time capsule of a time that was before vaccines, <laughs> before Broadway had a date that it was coming back. Um, we felt it was important to not only capture this moment, but also give ensemble members a platform to speak, because normally we marvel at what they do with their bodies and we don't hear them speak about their experience. And how did you all go about picking those that are in this documentary? Uh, that was all Aaron and Mo, I got to say. And I think they did a very good job of picking a very diverse and uh, a, a good cross section of, of who was who in the ensemble on Broadway. And Megan, when you were asked to be part of this documentary, what was your first reaction to this film that they wanted to create? Um, first off, I was like, yay, for the bravery of them wanting to make this and focusing on the ensemble because there just isn't enough of that. Um, I've always said that the ensemble is the backbone of any Broadway show and it wouldn't exist without it. Um, I was honored to be asked, but also like, terrified because I hadn't put on a pair of heels in probably a year and or like really done anything physical. I was uh, being an at home teacher to my kid. <laughs> like my whole world shifted and suddenly I was like, oh my God, I don't even know if I could stand up on one leg anymore. <laughs> For those that don't know, you do actually have a dance class prior to the conversation that took part. You all moved together first and foremost before you yeah. then sat with a lovely bottle of wine collectively and, <laughs> and had an open conversation. So was it was it kind of intimidating to get back into the room at Open Jar Studios and kind of start that process again? I didn't feel intimidated because I, uh, you know, I was like, I was excited to be around all of these artists. I hadn't been in a room with creative people in a year. And it like, I was just excited to feel other people's energy and be inspired by others. I also am at a point in my life uh, being a 45 year old dancer. I'm like, okay, this is where I'm at. This is what I got. I got nothing else to prove. Like if I fall down, I fall down. <laughs> and, I, and I think the lovely thing that that takes place is the very open dialogue that happens between all of those that participated in in the conversation at Open Jar Studios. It is a conversation that is not um, nothing's held back. Um, it's very open. It's very honest to where we are within the Broadway community, but it's where we were a year ago, not where we are necessarily today. So I'm curious, Megan, if anything during that conversation kind of maybe had surprised you in where the conversation really led to? I was really impressed with the younger dancers and how deeply they think about their place in the show and in the art form and how they feel like their voice matters in moving Broadway as a whole forward. Like, I never thought about that when I, I was just like, get the show like, you know, be a cog in the wheel, like make it happen. I, 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 I wasn't thinking on that grander scale and I was so impressed by all of them. And um, I think Aaron says in the film, he's like, I'm not sure if it's our generation to make the change, but I'm there to support the change. And I very much agree with that statement. Like, 
I, I, I don't, I, I don't know anything that I can do other than um, create space for other people to have the opportunity uh, and support. And Telly, with that conversation, you know, this was filmed a year ago before we all went back to, we all went back to work collectively speaking. Um, do you feel like the conversations that happened in that room over the course of an evening have helped transcend where we are today in the Broadway community? Do you think it's, it's, do you think they're, do you think Broadway is back to exactly where we were two years ago? Or do you think those changes are starting to happen? Well, I, I think that's what we've always wanted to do with Ensemble is that we wanted it to be a conversation starter. We mm -hmm. knew we were capturing this moment that was gonna sort of feel unfinished. There is no resolution at the end of the film because right. at that moment in March of 2021, there was no resolution. Nobody knew if they were gonna have jobs a month from then, three months from them, right? And of course, Broadway did end up coming back. We had the Tony Awards. It was a big celebration of Broadway being back. But I think so much of the discussion that we were having was about, well, if Broadway is back, do we want it to come back 100% the way that it was right. in 2019? And you know, Megan and I are around the same age. And I think for us coming up on coming up into Broadway, you know, from our teen years into our twenties, you know, uh, the system of Broadway that existed, it worked for us. All of a sudden, the entire world went through this event, this unprecedented event, where all of those systems fell apart. Broadway, as we knew it, fell apart. Our unions and how they operated fell apart. So I think this younger generation was ex is experiencing that and going, hey, well, if it's going to come back and we're the future, how do we make the necessary changes so that it comes back the better and kinder and smarter so that we're prepared for another event like this? And really a question for the two of you, what is something that you want people to take away from this documentary? What is one thing that you kind of want people to go, Broadway's not just all the happy show tune, stage lights. What do you want people to actually learn and take away from this documentary? Megan, I'll start with you. That everybody on that stage and backstage are humans. They're vulnerable, feeling humans. And that they're affected by everything. They're not just the smile. Just because they put on the smile and the glitter and go out there doesn't mean that that's who they are. They are right. acting for you to help you forget about your worries so they deserve to be taken care of absolutely in every way. and tell you same question for you i think the thing that drives me as a storyteller as far as my work as an actor my work as a teacher my work as a producer director is empathy and i think it's about understanding the 360 degrees or the attempt to understand the 360 degrees of somebody's experience so when you go see a broadway show and you and you see these amazing performers that make it look easy i think it's important to capture both sides there is joy Right. There is joy in us getting to do what it is that we love to do. There is joy in that younger generation of people saying to Megan Sakura, you are Broadway to me because I've seen you in so many shows. And now I am I am in a room dancing with you. There's great joy in that and, and, in, and in creating art with your community. But it is also a job. And I think that what this documentary does very well is talk about both sides of that job. The really joyful part where we get to make the art with people we love and respect and also the part that is the tough parts of anybody's job, right? There are parts of everybody's job that are difficult and challenging that, that people don't necessarily enjoy all the time. And I, I would love for audience members that love Broadway to go see our film and then sit in a Broadway theater and watch, a sh watch that show and have a newfound respect for everybody on that stage and off stage for that matter. Yeah. And I think, I think this documentary does such a great job at showcasing not just what ensemble members have gone through over the last really two years, but really what impact Broadway has on this community. 97,000 jobs within the Broadway community, how much money this industry makes for not just New York City theater, but then you expand that out to restaurants and hotels and tourism. And I think this documentary does such a great job with hitting those points in your face, especially at the beginning, to then lead up into the honest open conversation with everyone that's in the room. Um, and I think not only pairing that with what the industry has gone through with learning more about what swings do, what on what understudies, what standbys do, I think this pairs so well with showcasing how hard our industry members work within the Broadway space. 
That's right. It's our job to make it look easy. Right? It's right. our job, but the years of training, the years of rejection, the years of no, the years of financial instability, nobody ever puts that in a Playbill bio, right? That's not yep. what you get to see. So, so I think to take a minute while we had this opportunity of pause for our industry to take a minute and go, I really want to hear your story, Megan. I really want to hear your story, Aaron, Cameron, you know, like it's, 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 um, it's, uh, I was really happy that we got to be able to capture that. And Megan, you do it, you do become very vulnerable in this documentary when you're filming yourself in your apartment, actually in the same space you're in right now. <laughs> I noticed the the painting on the wall. Um, <laughs> was that hard for you to really be open to the fact that you don't really know where you're going to, at that moment, where you were going to yeah. be once Broadway did come back? I mean, I'm still sitting in that space, literally and figuratively. Um, yeah. I, like, I don't know where I fit. I, I like where Broadway is going isn't kind of what I serve up <laughs> and that's okay. So like, I'm just trying to figure out what else to do to be creative and continue moving because Broadway will come back around and there will be space for me again. And so, yeah, I'm okay. Like I'm actually enjoying being in the vulnerability, being in that space because I'm learning. Right. You know, there's a there's a great meme that's going around right now that says you are still an artist if you had to take a job to, yes. to pay the bills. You're still an artist if you had to take time off to have a baby. You're still an artist. And I think that was, you know, we went through an existential crisis in 2021 when we shot this documentary. Mm -hmm. There was no industry. There was no platform for these ensemble members to dance, to perform, to do what it is that they do. So, of course, you're going to get a, a, a lot of folks going, what is it that I do? And some people found other roles to play, whether that be parents, some people found a role in racial and social justice and being advocates for others that didn't have a voice. And I, th I think it's really interesting to watch people use their talents and their gifts in other ways when Broadway wasn't an avenue to, to, to ex exhibit that. I implore you all to watch this documentary. It's 50 minutes of pure information and celebrating everything that we love about this community with the people of this community. Um, Megan Telly, thank you so much for joining me today on iHeartRadio Broadway. And um, I wish you both nothing but the best. And thank you so much for this, this wonderful tribute to our community. Thank you. Thank you. And thank thanks you for watching so Ensemble. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing.